The visit comes one week after Trump's Attorney General, Jeff Sessions, sued California for passing a trio of sanctuary state laws that have, according to Sessions, blocked the administration from enforcing federal immigration statutes and followed it up with a fiery speech in Sacramento accusing state and local Democrats of boldly validating illegality. With a handful of exceptions North Korea comes to mind there are few governments that have worse relations with President Trump than California, wrote the New York Times. Yet the political stakes here are higher than many pundits seem to realize. That's because the latest immigration clash between California and Trump isn't just about California and Trump. It's also about the broader constituency the president has been antagonizing since taking office and is now antagonizing again, America's growing Latino electorate. Which means that in November, backlash to Trump among Latino voters could, in fact, decide the election, especially if Trump continues to energize the right wing over immigration, as he seemed determined to do Tuesday in California. What they've found are vast disparities between the exit polling and their own, more finely tuned analyses. In Nevada, for instance, exit polls reported that 60% of Latinos backed Clinton and 29% backed Trump. But last year, Francisco I. Pedraza, an assistant political science professor at the University of California, Riverside, and Brian Wilcox Arculita, a Ph.D. candidate at UCLA, concluded that the split may have been more like 88% for Clinton versus 10% for Trump. The bottom line is that, contrary to conventional wisdom, Clinton probably ran ahead of Obama among Latinos in key states, whereas Trump probably ran behind Romney. This could be part of the reason why Clinton came a lot closer to winning Arizona, 3.5 percentage points, and Texas, 9 percentage points, than Obama did in 2012, when he lost those two states by 9 points and 16 points, respectively. It could also be why Clinton's margin of victory in California was 1.3 million votes larger than Obama's. Of course, all that additional Latino backing did not put Clinton over the top in the Electoral College, which was decided in Ohio, Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, and Michigan. But that doesn't mean it didn't exist. The real story is that Latino turnout was up in basically every jurisdiction in the U.S., says Segura. The actual precinct vote shows that about 79% of Latinos nationwide voted for Clinton, up from about 70% in recent years. Those extra 9 percentage points are obviously a reaction to Trump. Which brings us to 2017 the first big election of the Trump era. The Virginia gubernatorial race was supposed to be close, and the Commonwealth's House of Delegates was supposed to remain safely Republican. Neither prediction panned out. After a campaign defined largely by Trumpian tactics, Republican gubernatorial candidate Ed Gillespie ran ads about sanctuary cities and the MS-13 gang Democrats won the governorship by 9 percentage points and picked up 15 seats in the legislature. On the Senate side of things, the Latino factor may be even more pronounced. To regain control of the world's greatest deliberative body, Democrats need to net two additional seats. Their top targets? Arizona, where Republican incumbent Jeff Flake is retiring, and Nevada, where Republican incumbent Dean Heller has tied himself in knots over Trump's policies on health care and taxes. Latino voters could conceivably decide both contests. Arizona has America's fourth largest Latino electorate, as a percentage of the overall voting population, Nevada where former Democratic Senator Harry Reid has organized a formidable Latino turnout machine, is sixth on that same list. Even though national Latino turnout did not rise in 2016, it surged in Arizona and increased in Nevada, according to state-level census data released last year in part because of Democratic Party mobilization efforts and in part because of backlash to Trump. If Nevada and Arizona go blue, Democrats will likely take back the Senate. There's no guarantee that Latinos will show up later this year, white voters, and even black voters, have been almost twice as likely to turn out as Latinos in midterm elections. Yet we've never seen what a midterm looks like with Trump as president.
if recent history is any guide and if Trump keeps needling Latinos the way he's needling them this week in California then it might look like nothing we've seen before.